Oh, baby. What in the fatty McFat fat is ready to go on the back back? Look at them old hog mollies. Black on black on black on black. That's right, as y'all can see, we got our stillies and uh, our tires on our stillies, I mean. A little 20570 15 in the front, but a big old 275 60 in the rear. That should help give us the hot rod look we're after. And what we're after here, uh, guys, is we're trying to fulfill our mission. No, we're on a quest to make this wagon the best. No, we are on a uh, journey to fulfill our destiny of uh, putting this wagon uh, back on the road. And in this video, we've kind of made it to the point of some of the finer details on the old chassis here. As in hardware being loose is probably not good for going up and down the road. We could probably put some parking brake cables together. We ain't got no fuel lines, we ain't got no brake lines, and that ain't no good neither. This is flip flopping. Suspension not being tightened up is clanking and knocking. And none of that's good if we want this wagon to be show stopping. <laughs> I don't know about show stopping. We got, that's what them boys from like Ohio say, the show quality patainer. That's what we got here. Uh, guys, we need to do a little bit on this, on the chassis side of things. We need to do a little bit on the car side of things. Ultimately, with the goal being to get these two ready to go back together. And y'all know me, I'm always just firing from the hip and I'm winging it. And I'm also always selling good quality merchandise at PuddingsFabShop.com. Uh, but in this case, I think it would do us some good to walk around this thing, perhaps make a list, uh, because it's easy to miss the little stuff and we don't want to miss the little things. First we'll get us a list making piece of mo material. Speaking of list, put it on your list. April 15th, the truck gathering. I think is what it's called, Norman, Oklahoma. April 15th, uh, Puddin's Fab Shop, we're gonna set up there. We should have a couple canopies. We'll be slinging merchandise. I think I'm gonna bring both internationals, uh, the truck, the travel all, and both box trucks. So the Yeehaw and the Dancing King will all be there. That Dancing King will be there arm swinging, baby. You don't wanna miss it. Only car show I plan on doing this year, so it's the meet and greet opportunity. Now, who wants to be on my shit list? We're gonna keep this list professional. We're gonna start with a hyphen, and uh, I'm gonna put loose hardware. That's gonna let me know to tighten that crap up, but we do need two lock washers. So it gets a little underlining circle, kind of like a high school guideline. And uh, we put get washers, and that'll remind me to get washers. P forward slash B cables. Brake line, fuel line, classics. However, I said some of the smaller details, stuff I'm gonna forget. I forgot we got this uh, torched off bolt in here, so bumper bracket bolt, also known as the BBB, the big black bolt. Let me get rid of it. It looks like we're good on this side. No, no it don't, cause there ain't no nut back there, just a clip. Old crappy exhaust hanger, old crappy exhaust hanger. Looks like they possibly unbolt. So we'll get rid of them. Exhaust hanger, bye-bye. I need to check to see if we even have that brake hose. I don't remember seeing it. For your brake hose, question mark. Got brake hoses, we got hard lines to do up here. Added us a stuff to order tab down here, rear brake hose, engine mount, 700R4 mount. Up front, we got a luby Doobie, our BJs, our ball joints. Got to tighten our A-arm bushings. And we still ain't got our sleeves for our tie rods, so everything up here is still pretty well mocked up. Of course, I know that, and that ain't something we're gonna forget. Uh, but like these, I didn't full tighten them how I want them yet. I kind of had them loose so we could uh, get all that assembled. Mm. And down here on the body side of things, there's a few things we want to do too. Don't think I forgot about that pesky rust down in there. I think that's the last rot we got to fix on this thing and I'd prefer to fix it just when we can crawl underneath there, no chassis in our way. Uh, so we probably need to fix that before we make these two uh, together or whole or whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> make these two one again. In this case, one plus one is gonna equal one, just like basic algebra two I took in sixth grade. 
This will get us going. We're gonna start on the chassis since this is tucked along the wall. Hopefully we get the chassis where we want it. We roll it outside, we untuck the wagon. We bam, 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 get after it, and there we go. You out bike riding already, Bill? Yeah. Getting after it. Woo! I think it's getting after me. <laughs> that cold air feel good on them lungs? Yeah. Probably sold that body too. Stiff! <laughs> <laughs> Need some Louie Doobie on them joints. And step number one, we're gonna get these wheels and tires. Bill, they done sent you. I don't know, but they know who you are. You always run from the camera. <laughs> I'm just used to getting out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna get our tires out the way, and I think we're gonna start with our fuel brake line, kind of bending, manipulating. Yeah, those look really nice. Yeah. I like those. Got a roll of quarter inch. Uh, this will be good for our brake lines to the rear. Whoop. And I got a roll of three eighths here. We'll do that for our fuel. I think factory, these things were five sixteenths. But uh, if someone eventually, cause we'll end up selling this thing eventually. Uh, if someone wants to put a gas guzzling engine in this thing to actually put them fatty McFat fats to work, uh, they may need the extra volume. So three eighths it is. And it's what we got in stock, so that's what we're gonna use. Now I took pictures before we disassembled, but our clips here, one holds the brake, one holds the fuel line, and they run all the way down this chassis. I don't know if our 3 8 is gonna click into there, uh, but we're gonna start our way at the front and work our way tor towards the rear. This little stuff's a little stiff. Ugh. Like me waking up, Never mind. <laughs> that sounded bad. I was I was meaning like when you wake up and you're stiff, like your joints, okay? Probably shouldn't say I woke up stiff. The stuff's a little stiff, like new fuel line, okay? That's that's it. <laughs> and of course, I do not have the tool to straighten this stuff, so we're just going to use old Pot County belly here. And uh, as you come this way, whoo, push out like that. Oh, yeah. That's all you need. We'll slap a few zip ties on it right there and it should be good to go. Now it's kind of trying to hold in there. I mean, it clicked. A click's a click, dang it. Oh yeah, that's fitting good. Y'all see that uh, clip? It almost looks, there's, a, there's definitely a little anchor stamped into that clip. Maybe y'all can see that one better. So who knows the story on that? How come them little clips got anchor stamped into them? It's kind of cool. I think old Slick Fetty of the Seven Seas would uh, approve of that one. So the challenge here is just what you've seen there. You gotta manipulate it. You gotta get it close enough where it wants to stay in them clips. I mean, the clip needs to hold it, but it ain't gonna hold it if there's really tension on it. So we kinda had to curve that down as you just seen. Uh, we get it clicked in there. Then back here, I kind of manipulate it till it's sitting pretty even with our clip. And we'll see how this feels. And yeah, you know, now, now that's going to hold that before uh, it was popping out of there. Yeah, I don't think she's coming out of there. So besides manipulating that to kind of flow down along through there, another thing we want to make sure uh, it ain't doing is chafing. Uh, chafing will get you, if you know what I mean, on a hot day but it also gets your metal if you're just rubbing metal on metal and it can vibrate at all. So this is kind of hard to show, but all the way back, like right there, boom, there's a corner. Okay, we definitely don't want that rub in a corner, uh, which there's not, there's a gap there. And we want to maintain that as much as we can down through here. I think something like that'll work if I can get it to whoop down. Uh -huh. We're getting close there. Gotta get it so it wants to end there. We're flowing decent. Uh, the pitchers, the factory had it kind of kicked out in this way. That way we got room for a brake line. But this is kind of sticking up, so we want to try to bend it down some. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Much better. Sometimes you just need an extra set of hands. Bill hold 
held that, I held that, shove it. There we go. Be a good place to have a clip. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a brake line clip there. Yeah, the other side broke off. Oh. <laughs> We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, except for the Laco clip. That'd be a good place to have one. We gotta have some type of clamp on it. We can't just let it dangle around there. Hmm, set for three eighths. Maybe be a little small. Could definitely hit that sucker with some self tapper action if we wanted. Self tapper is a little redneck though, if you ask me. New segment, thoughts with Bill. Uh, do self tappers go on hot rod builds? <laughs> <laughs> Bill just, I'm, I'm sure in Oklahoma it does. <laughs> yeah, you, your eyebrows just said yes. It was written all over you that you've used them before. I was like, well, we are in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> got us a drill bit, got us a tap, and we're going to see if we can't get one of these rubber clamps installed. Now, we may not have proper size drill bits, so once you get through, one or two around the world's never hurt nothing. The key here is having a good quality tap, which we do have a good one for a quarter 20. Let me get US gear, not USA gear, US gear. This sucker here don't play no games. I told you, I got the sticker over there. I that's what I put okay. in my last one. All right, just making sure. <laughs> Papa Bill here. And this luby dooby right here, or cut fluid's good stuff. Soy sauce? You see how that hole was way too small, but this yeah, thing didn't yeah. care. <laughs> that seemed to push a little harder. I'm gonna say, man, you need to go around the world about once or twice more. <laughs> Give it hell. Lean on it. A little trick with these, I like to put my uh, wrench down in there and kind of bend that, flatten it. That way, when you pinch it around, those holes, they'll, they'll line up a little better. Be kind of good to have a good mount, so you know what I mean. Don't tempt me. We can clamp it all the way. Did it pop out? Yeah. I'll freaking clamp every single one of them with a piece of rubber. All right, just green. Kind of cool. Got good over quarter inch of material there where it's all plated up and gusseted or whatever. Boxed. That's the word. She's boxed. Like I said, them uh, clamps would be enough. And then we'll just go ahead and put these everywhere too. <laughs> all right, guys. Got a clamp there, there there and the first one that we actually had to have and i guarantee you uh now that thing ain't going nowhere even if it wanted it couldn't oh baby like we've done that before right. bill <laughs> do you need brake lines or fuel lines come see us here in pot county That stuff bent up like it was meant to be. Me and Bill knocked that right out. But right here, we need to hang a 90 kind of long in here. And it floats oh, out to this sure. area. And right here, that bolt was in there. And that's what's supposed to clamp that there. So obviously, this needs a little restoration work. Top notch restoration work, Bill. Where's the wire wheel? <laughs> She's practically sandblasted at this point and ready for some paint. Get her old clamp slapped in the paint booth here, ready for some powder coat. It's gonna make this a top-notch restoration is the fact that if that don't dry quick, we're gonna install it wet because I ain't got time to play no games with paint. Bill took off. He said he's going to get his bender. He wants to put a perfect 90 right here. Oh, okay. That's what I get for trying to take Bill's thunder 
it started to kink on me just a little there nothing bad but uh it's not what we want that's for certain that's what i get for trying to be ornery what are you doing baker bill <laughs> <laughs> all right bill i apologize for trying to be ornery behind your back all right yeah we can take her a little more you think back in here Bill, we're going to be known as top quality Impala restoration guys. <laughs> and we're going to put a clip over here because someone uh, accidentally ripped that one out, hand bending that when Bill was gone. <laughs> you know we got to stay uh, energized here with our good Pedialyte packets. I would have had a semi good crop last year, but the damn squirrels. I wrote down BBB earlier. That really stands for Bill's Banana Bread. <laughs> Hopping in with you, Bill. No, I was gonna ask you about something else, but. Hey, don't forget the Oklahoma rim job. Oh, oh, rammer, rammer. Rim it out. Careful, careful. Bill was hopping in and out of this thing like he was in a WWF tag team wrestling match. <laughs> hopping over the rope ready to whip some ass. Old Bill's tool sure helped me out because we had another hard 90 here. We did the swoop to do. And then from the factory, another one of them metal clamps was right here, but this ain't actually threaded. So instead of putting a through bolt there, uh, we're about to give it the Oklahoma rim job. Then we're gonna hit it with a pot county nut cert. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is for quarter th uh, 20 threads. So that'll be the same as what we've been putting everywhere else. And of course we can just put one of our rubber clamps right here. We ain't even gotta use the big metal one. Now I decided to add a clamp up here and I added it in the smartest spot on that little gusset there. So we need a shorter bolt. If you do not trust your cutting abilities, I'll run you a nut down on there first. Any of the little threads that do get messed up, you can kind of clean it up by reversing that off there. There we go. Got our little stubby bolt. I wasn't going to use these at first, but I'm glad we did overall. Y'all know they're a better clamp. They're definitely going to not let that fuel line go anywhere. And it also does a better job of uh, isolating it. And right there, we are DUN with that. We're done. And Bill uh, ran us some brake line. I didn't figure y'all want to watch one be bent up towards the rear again. We stubbed straight up here. That's going to go to our uh, master cylinder, obviously. Come across the cross member. Now going back this way, uh, I did eliminate a few of the metal clamps. They just weren't holding the quarter inch brake line very well. So where those clamps were, I just put uh, more of them nut certs in there. And we just got it double clamped. Uh, these were wanting to chafe there, so we get a little zip tied chafe wrap. That's one of my specialties. And bring her on down and around. And we're stopping right here because when we get our brake hose tomorrow, uh, we'll put an end on it and get all that taken care of. Now our disc brake kit actually came with brake lines. Uh, we got this one and a couple others. And from what I can tell, they're just fitting up like garbage. Yeah, so look at these. This is probably for our uh, driver's side. We'll go from down here up towards our uh, whatever it's called, proportioning valve. Maybe those are crazy bends for the uh, fender wheel or something, I don't know. I have some 3 sixteenths right here, which is what we need for the front. We can, we'll whip something up, how's that? Step one, we're gonna cut uh, this piece of crap so we can get our fittings anyhow. So right here we got a brake flaring kit. This is just a cheapo one you can get off like Amazon. And if you get a real nice one, they do work a little better. Uh, but I've done a couple of different vehicles now with this and ain't had a problem yet. Kind of straighten us out a piece here. Be sure to put your fitting on and nothing sucks worse than flaring that sucker and realizing you never put your fitting on. I'm gonna give this the eagle eye about how much I think it should stick up. Now that should stick up about the thickness of uh, that piece that I just dropped. 
should be the thickness of that, which is dang near perfect, that little lip there. Now this is what makes it a double flare. Uh, first go around, we're gonna drop that down in there and shove that down. Drop, shove. You just wanna take that so it flattens that out. Then you pull that out of there and you take it for another ride on this and that's what makes it the double flare. Because you didn't do it once, you did it twice. Take that sucker out of there and she should be good to go. Old man Bob's over there getting buck nasty with his table saw. Let's start to run this. To do that, we need to get in this. Because right back here, we got us some uh, brake lines. Or brake hoses, I mean. Our brake hose is gonna pop right into there. This would be a great time to have some brake clips. We got some, they're probably the wrong ones, but we got some. Hey, if it'll hold it, we'll take it. That sucker's tight. Well, hot damn, Uncle Sam, let's just mount that old girl up then. Get our banjo bolt and a couple co copper washers. Of course, you put one washer on, put your bolt through your banjo, put your other washer on, then we gotta find where it threads onto here. Make sure to get it nice and snug. This is casted with a notch right there where that's supposed to go through. We turn it that way and check for clearance. Take it this way and make sure we don't max it out. And it looks to me like we got clearance, Clarence. We should be able to thread this down into that. And then we'll start bending, working our way up here. And we're gonna, our goal is, well, we gotta cross this stuff somewhere. But we want to come on the top side of this where we can share them three uh, bolt holes for uh, the clamps for this piece as well. Get in there, Stubby. Ain't my first time to say that. I've put Stubby bolts in before. We're doing good, but to get behind this, I'm actually going to have to take this back off, disconnect that, fish it underneath there, put that back in, then we can make that happen. clamp down if your clamp's sticking up just give it a little tappy tap now we're just gonna bring it all the way around it's kind of tedious uh, you gotta do it it's not the hardest thing but it's definitely worth it guys because having this nice new chassis new you know what I mean when I said new okay uh, but yeah having everything new you know you got good brake lines you know you got good fuel lines you know you got good everything yeah, baby. Huh? Uh-oh, they need me ASAP. Boy, I've lost that Allen wrench about a thousand times today. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Doing pretty good right there. I'm pretty happy with that. Mm. 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 Get your loud truck out of here. Mm. Mm. Everyone wants to know why they can't stop by. Put it in perspective, I've had three people within 10 minutes now. And guess what? If I hung out with 10 minutes apiece for all those people, that's 30 minutes, half an hour gone. And I try not to be rude to people. You know what I mean? I just try to keep it short and let them know I ain't got time to hang out. I ain't got time to talk. And then, of course, you know, I get painted as the bad guy by some people down in the comments. Oh, Mr. Big Head, Mr. Hollywood. Guys, it just, it's not fair. It's just not, okay? And they never really said this, because I don't think I should have to explain it. But, like I said, if you have three, four people a day, that's 30, 40 minutes a day that you're just losing that much time which means I either stay out here later, I get up earlier, and or I lose that time with my girls, which I don't think most people realize I'm probably working 70 hours a week as is. But don't ask people not to come by because then that means you think you're Mr. Hollywood and you just made it and you don't need us. You done forgot your roots and where you come from, boy. That ain't the case, guys. There just ain't enough time in the day for everything I do. And 
I tell people sitting on your ass won't finish your project? Well, standing around talking about them don't finish them neither. <laughs> Y'all done got me sidetracked in Hollywood here done lost his hammer. Oh, Benson, my hammer, please. My little assistant I have, y'all don't know because I'm big time Hollywood runs out and hands me my hammer. <laughs> Pudding, how do you get so much work done every week? I usually just stand around and talk to people and it, it finishes itself. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm always, I mean, as the channel grows, we're going to face that. There's a guy messaging me mad at me the other day on Instagram. I'm just like everyone else because I don't respond to everything that people send. I'm like, hey, bud, you try to sort through a hundred messages a day. I, I guarantee y'all, replying to all that stuff, we'd lose an hour or two of work a dang day going through emails, Instagram, Facebook. And I said, hey, I'm sorry you feel let, let down by me. It's just impossible. There ain't enough time in the day. He said, well, I've been watching you from the start. So I, I guess I'm supposed to know who started watching me first and then they get priority or something. You know, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I got to channel my inner Miss Cleo. The crystal ball said this man watched me first. I ain't big time and I ain't Hollywood. I'm just busy, guys. Give me a little grace here. Jeez Louise. If y'all hop in my Hollywood limo with me and drive over here. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Uh, whoever don't... I know people watch who don't really understand car stuff. So if you want to kind of understand what we're doing, real simple. Uh, right here, this is where our fuel is going to come from. So off of this, there will be a little rubber hose that goes to our fuel pump. Well, fuel's going out there. That means back here, fuel needs to be going in here. So there'll be a rubber hose that goes from it up into our gas tank. The gas tank hides up in this quarter. That's what that strap holds up. Right here's our new one. Uh, she was made in Taiwan. Taiwan. Now, as far as our brake lines go, uh, we're upgrading our brakes. So if we have a little look see underneath here. You see our old master cylinder up there. And all the system was fed off of one line. But we're getting rid of that crap. There's our booster. Here's our new master cylinder. That'll all bolt together and bolt on the firewall and sit directly underneath it will be our proportioning valve. That hooks up to this and then this will hook up to our lines over there. This fitting right here, it'll feed the rear brakes. That's this big one right here. This and this will feed our front brakes. This one here and this one we ain't got to worry too much about because we should be able to build that one with everything together. I reckon it'd probably be a good time to check our uh, list. Broken bolts and exhaust hanger, bye-bye. She done. We got Bill's banana bread up next. Shoot, I'm feeling lazy. Let's do something easy. Definitely should have pulled that off there before we had this painted and blasted. That looks way more gooder. That was the lazy job. Uh, these may be a little more complicated. Tap that out of there. That nut was welded to that clip, but uh, those welds broke. So if we could decide what bolts we're gonna put back in there, we could actually just probably pop these clips off, weld our new nuts to these clips, and then put it back together and it'd be ready to go. To put it in perspective again, it's about 20 minutes since I did my little not really ramp, but explanation, and we have more visitors. There's our clip. Popped our clip off the other side, and I had to run all the way across town to the next town over. However, I found some hardware I do believe we need. And these right here is what I believe needs to go back here. Do a little grinding on our clips there. Uh, right there, I took the grade eight clean off of it. She's ready for some welding. We'll weld that on there real quick. Uh, I'm surprised we ain't out of gas because I left my gas on and I ain't touched the TIG welder in weeks. Uh, so, hey, at least we know our system's sealed. Uh, let's get some hardware put on here. AKA this big old lock washer I just bought. She's a rootin' tootin' five-eighths worth. We gotta get these tight on all of our uh, control arms back here. If you didn't see last week's video, we boxed these in and dimple dyed them. That's what you see here. It kind of cracked me up 
I hate to say it. <laughs> a lot of people are concerned about they're gonna hold water and dirt, even though all we did was fill it full of holes. Guys, they're not closed. There's opening there, there's opening at the very back, and uh, water, dirt, all that's gonna run downhill. These things laid in dirt for 50 years and did not rest away. I was sandblasting and painting them and driving around in town on asphalt's not gonna rest them away in a year or two, I promise. She'll be good to go. Yeah. Got them with the Ugga Dugga machine then a hand cranking. This sneaks down in there. However, I think I have that one at the right angle for the shock. This one looks like it's kind of aiming up though and it kind of needs to go down a hair. So hopefully we can get that out of there, adjusted, then we'll tighten it up. Might as well hit it with my purse. There we go, she moved. That one there would definitely start. That's the perfect angle. Same thing, that looks really good there. Before, uh, that would have been aimed up, so I like that better. Dang, what kind of half-ass shocks they selling me, huh? Can't even get a full paint job on one. Rattle Can Dan does not approve. Yes, right, right there. Whoopsie daisy. Every once in a while, it catches it just right and uh, it eats the piece you're working on. And just cause it'll go in there, don't always mean it wants to come out of there. Oh. After you weld that nut, uh, your bolt probably ain't gonna be the happiest threading into there cause it burns off all that coating. Well, don't worry. Cause if you've got a battery terminal wire brush, just run that baby through there. A little crunchy. I can feel it in there crunching. That first one cleaned up and threaded on no problem. The second one is being ornery. Uh, luckily, I have a tap that size. I didn't even know I had that. Get these babies ready for another 60 years on the car. I'll go around and get all that stuff tightened up because we're about to take a rattle can and any of that hardware that ain't painted some of the old stuff we had to clean up we're gonna dust it a little bit and try to clean it up or paint it i mean kind of wet my rag and where all of our bolts are uh i'm gonna kind of wipe and clean up just get the dust and dirt it'll take a coat or two so be patient You dang right, baby. That should keep that from flip flopping. I like it when a plane comes together. I don't like it when I reach in that old hidey hole of a pocket for a marker and my finger gets stabbed by a damn wire brush. Spindle nut. Now spindle nut, some of y'all last week was not happy with my custom cotter pin job. Uh, there wasn't no spacer, there wasn't no keeper, you know, it didn't line up. Y'all seen me build my custom cotter pins and some of y'all didn't like that. <laughs> well, when I was at the hardware store, I seen a bin called Thick Washers and they have this in there and I believe our thing's a three quarter inch hole and if it is, we can slide this on there to space that out and if it ain't, uh, we're shit out of luck. <laughs> Did y'all see that form? I could be part of the men's, what do they call that? Curling or hurling or where they slide the damn thing. Whew, they slide it, it's going. The other guy been waiting for the push for him, he's gonna sweep. Can't believe y'all disapproved of that. Can't take it off there. I don't know what you're upset about. <laughs> oh, perfect size thicken. 
Well, we got some good news there, folks. The good news is old thick girl there was the perfect size uh, to get that where we needed it. What's next? The internet's gonna say that ain't the proper way to cotter pin or what? Let's just stir the cotter pin pot. Hey, windy this morning already. Oh, 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 got that big toe. These babies may have memory foam, a wide fit, and they're air-cooled like an old Volkswagen, but they don't offer much protection to the big toe when you drop some locking pliers on them. Whoop! Yeah, it smells like tornado season's coming. Now, yesterday we did some not-so-fun stuff, but the stuff is necessary. Uh, today we got a couple things in already that we're gonna uh, see if we can't finish up doorman help 21126 real simple that goes in there and then it can't come out and same thing that goes in there and then it can't come out if we put that in there and then once that gets all the slop out of it uh that shouldn't come out of there anyhow Boop. make sure that's in there and besides that our rear brake hose did come in so we can get it uh, finished up it appears i may have made a mistake that's been known to happen I was pretty sure it had quarter inch rain to the rear, but maybe it didn't. Uh, this fitting here going down to three eighths, uh, I don't even think they make a fitting for this and a quarter inch line. Quarter inch ain't gonna hurt nothing, even though, is that not what came on these? It don't matter, it's what's going on in this one. So I've got the stuff coming to be able to hook up a hose on the back that will work. We're gonna move on to our rush repair and look underneath this thing. Here comes the rain. Do the shop shuffle and get us a little bit of workroom over here. Uh-huh, we can work with that. Get her lit up down there. Now from up here, that looks pretty bad. Well, let's kind of look up underneath here and assess. So this here is actually part of our quarter. So we can replace it as a piece. And then underneath here, uh, looks like that's kind of folded up. We need to get it folded down. Rush comes up into here, but then it appears to quit. If we flatten this lip out, we could probably hammer along all of that and uh, come up here however far, cut us out a chunk. I don't think none of this is going to be too bad. Step one, we'll cut this chunk out of our way because we know we got to do something about that. Time to get the old slicing dice. As you can see, I've clearly done an expert job of removing that so we know how to recreate it and mimic this exact shape. Metal lip there had some spot welds to it and that kind of uh, messed us up a hair. Now, I'm just assuming this lip is supposed to be straight up and down as I put it straight up and down. This one up here obviously comes down and flattens out. So I got to work that whole edge and get it uh, back where it's supposed to be. Or where I think it's supposed to be. It's going to be where it ends up, I can tell you that much. <laughs> See some spot welds up on there. This piece looks like it sits in here. Obviously there's a flange there. There's a flange over here. That's what we've been bending. Of course, we'll have to recreate this piece. It's gonna sit up in here. So we gotta figure out how far up we're gonna go up this way. Everything up in here seems pretty solid. I'll just go up here-ish. I'm not saying you should use a cutoff wheel the way I just did, but a cutoff wheel does pretty good about grabbing chunks of that undercoating and flinging it off there, or a lot of sanding type stuff will just remelt that crap and then it smears everywhere. Uh, right there, I can see one, two, three, four, 
five spot welds that we can drill. That's also a good way to knock that stuff off, by the way. There's another perfect piece we can imitate. Make in a little bit of a workout. We got a little cleanup to do here. This piece looks pretty RUFF. -F. It's pretty rough. So I think I'm gonna mark it underneath this bead up here. We'll cut it straight across that away. You know, just create a little more work for us. I like working. I just ain't a sheet metal guy. Dag nabbit, I messed up. Got a little off there and got up into our bead. Just a hair right there. Yeah, we'll make it work. To start recording, I had to rearrange the shop to get everything over here so I could have the chassis there. This morning, I had to move the chassis there so I had to get the stuff from around the wagon. So now our metal, we need a, uh, you know, we can just shuffle stuff again. Do the old pudding thing shuffle, baby. Oh, get down with it. Uh-huh. Why ain't you gonna dance? Sitting on your ass won't finish a project. Hanging out, talking, don't finish a project. Dancing around, don't finish a project. Boy, it sure makes for a fun time. Woo! Hey, there's a piece of scrap. I'm hoping this will fit right here when we get rid of this oddball piece. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Coming out next week, my new hit single, uh, I'm Not a Sheet Metal Guy. It'll be on the radio. When you see that gleam in my eye, you know I'm not a sheet metal guy. I'll tell this rest bye-bye, but I ain't no sheet metal guy. Quick little clean up around the edges. And there's our first piece tacked in. She fits up all right in there. As it cools off some, we're gonna start messing with our template here. And someone didn't cut the straightest up there neither, so our, uh, <laughs> our piece is gonna have a little curve to it. That's all right, pushing that up there and dragging that. It'll mark it out pretty well perfect, just like that. And we'll do the same on our edges. Here we go, mark down there where we kind of end. 
Same thing over here. We break and we end. And I don't know how the heck we're gonna put the curve and everything else in this. We're just gonna go for it. A wise man once said, it'll work or it won't. kind of held it up in place and uh, we require a slight trimming in a couple areas main thing to doing stuff like this guys is just being willing to jump in and do it got to be willing to fail you got to be willing to say what the hell i ain't scared to fail that ain't quite a 90 but uh it's pretty close luckily for us all of our sheet metal equipment is uh tucked in here behind this chassis I'm pretty sure we already messed up because when we break this and then shrink this to put the curve in it, we're going to lose material, but we're just going to try it and see what happens. Well, that kind of backfired. <laughs> I needed the one side to be kind of curvy like that and the other side to be sharp. I couldn't lock down this because it's behind the brake. And uh, yeah, I need that flip-flopped actually. Kind of crisp that side up a little bit and open this side up a little bit yeah we should be able to shrink on the ends and get it to curve a little bit i definitely think i broke this too much as a whole so i did one pass across the whole thing you can see the marks those things actually have jaws and they grab the metal and shove it in so as we shove this in on each other it's gonna start curving this piece. Work that in a little more and yep, it's starting to do its job. This would probably work a little better if ours was a deep throat where it could get down there a little further, but this is what we got. A few more kick starts and you can see it's starting to whoop now. And after that sucked in, you can also see why I said we were going to be in trouble because them corners pulled in. That kind of opens up to about a quarter inch gap on each side. I could weld that if I needed to. My best bet would be to remake the piece. Grind that down a hair, clean that up a hair, open her up a hair. We'll go check it a hair and see if it's going to fit in there. I mean, that's pretty close. We're part near there. I'm going to kind of twist on this piece and work it in a little better, and I think we'll tack it in. There's a wild man Bill back in action. Honestly, guys, I should remake this piece, but honestly, I ain't going to. <laughs> I just say that because the gap right there is a little big, but if we take our time, it'll weld. It'll weld. It's a wire welder. <laughs> Not shabby. We could have done better. I may have sort of forgot to weld up that inside piece, so I'm going to get it next. Before I weld it on that piece, there's that little lip down there. I may have sort of kind of forgot to clean that up and prime it. We can clean up and primer the rest though. So Mr. Wing it and Ding it, I just light up underneath there. And this was my beautiful, and yeah, it almost looks like a dragon. This is the ferocious mouth, it's mean horn. It looks like a piece of candy corn. <laughs> All right, that looks like a dragon if a two-year-old drew it, maybe. I kind of just shoved it up in place. Anywhere where we may try to break, you cut a little V-cut out the corner uh, where it can fold up. I messed up over here, so I just kind of 
I drew it over here. I think I kind of know what I need. Now this was short though. So the rest of this material, I'm literally just winging it. We might get lucky and we might be building this piece for a second time, who knows? Break that edge up out of the way where we can go get this piece in the actual break. Now folding that up messed up our corner, but that's a sacrifice we want to make. We can just tap that back down. I ain't getting super duper picky here, guys. Whatever we can get to fit in there, we'll take. Ooh, look at those clouds over there. Look at them clouds, Bill. I know, that's what I'm saying. Meteorologist Bill found it. We got rotation, we got rotation. Yeah. You know where that's headed, right? Right to your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's rotation right above us, Bill. Oh yeah, look at that. I got a tornado about to come down on us. We're not we're not in like tornado type weather here, guys. Uh, oh, yeah. Tornado wants to come down, it better be ready because I'm gonna whip its ass because I got too much to do to be playing games with it. Yeah, you're gonna have to get out that Texas bull whip for that one. I can get out that tex te Texas gas station cowboy hat we bought that one time. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on down here, tornado. See what happens. Oh, here back looked like we were doing pretty decent. We definitely need more uh, curve in here. You may notice our lips are hair smaller. Uh, I cut some of that off. It'll definitely make it easier to work here. Well, we got some good news and we got some bad news. Uh, bad news is, boy, I plum whipped the devil out of it right there. Uh, kind of do a little trim in here or there to get it to even start to plop down in there. It don't fit as good as you'd want if you're trying to do a perfect restoration. Now don't let this dangling tail light and spray paint patina tailgate fool you. Uh, we're not doing a perfect restoration. It does fit in there in a way where I think I could probably start working it into place and just get it where I'm happy with it. Let's just say I'm easy to pleasey. It's getting buck nasty outside now. Rain, rain, go away. We got shit to do today. If you don't, I don't care. I'll pull down your underwear. She ain't going nowhere now. Those feel real good in the mustache. Probably should have drilled these before we put this in here. Back here, I put a couple self tappers in there to hold that, drilled us some holes, and I'm about to roll that over onto this. So that'll flatten onto there, kind of like this body out here did from the factory. We basically eliminated that flange back there because my flange was too short. It's still sticking up in there uh, for strength. But just watch. We get a welded up, a little flap attack, a little cleanup action. I think it's gonna look all right. Good enough, okay? Good enough for underneath the car when I'm gonna buck 20 and blow your doors clean off down the interstate. Whoa! Hi there, went pudding. I can see that spare tire holder from here. That looks like hell. This old pig may clean up yet. <laughs> I get that blue four and a half inch flap attack out. I'm ready. I mean business. Day you in, I'm done. I ain't doing no more. That ain't true, I gotta spray it with some stuff. I ain't doing no more metal work. So right over here, uh, our rust is down there. You can't even hardly tell we done anything. The lip that was back here, I cut it off and just got it flush. Did a little taper job right there. I cut this in and just butted that across there. 
because uh, this had a little funky shape in it, little relief cut there. The only place I missed at all was this corner was missing. Uh, so I put a piece in from the other side and butt welded it. And that spot welded there. And uh, oh, I see a little grinding I need to do right there. And where this folded all looks pretty good too. Uh, I got a hole to weld up there and there. I ain't too picky guys, I'll take that. We'll probably seam seal it here on the inside. And punch a hole down in it so it can drain where hopefully it don't hold water and rust out again. Yeah. Love it when a plan comes together, even if it takes about three hours longer than I planned. She's all seam sealed and all primered inside. And down here I got her all primered. Pretty happy with that now that it's all done. We'll definitely do a little patina blend right there. But it's gonna have to warm up a little bit because uh, that, that storm came in. We dropped from mid 60s to like 40 degrees now. I'm so happy right now I could hit a toe touch. I was having a victory water because we're done fixing the rot on this thing. That was the last rust we gotta fix, guys. And yeah, victory water. I should have got crazy and put some Pedialyte in it. Now let's look at our gas tank situation. Now there is a little rot down here, uh, but right there, yeah, I think that needs replaced too. If we happen to come across a decent little quarter here, uh, we would entertain the idea of fixing that. I don't have the lead on one, and I ain't building that out of the, uh, just flat metal. Oh. Oh. I doubt anything like a strap came with our tank, but uh, let's open this up and have a look-see. You never know. Oh baby, good thing we looked right there. Don't tell me it comes with a bolt too. Shut the front door. Oh, 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 a victory dance. We'll break in this memory foam yet. Beautiful new tank. It even comes with a cinder. Apparently this thing comes with everything besides a fuel cap. That thing's longer than a Monday. Spray that down and get a little lubrication in this situation. The sucker is way back here. I tapped it all the way until our hard stops right there hit each tab. I'm feeling fancy with a fresh tank. Go ahead and put us a piece of hose on here. I reckon we're half ready to go back with this thing. That's a good quality ground right there. Carriage bolt slides right in. We got a jam nut here, so we'll take it towards the top. I half got it up in there. Oh, there we go. Get underneath here where I can push. Woo! Staring at. <laughs> I definitely ate some dirt from that. And that dirt's from the 60s, because that's when this thing was on the road. <laughs> Actually, I bet that dirt's older than that. <laughs> Wonder if we shouldn't take a tap and uh, try to clean all of them out. Now there is a panel that screws in here and covers up all this. We could get gas in and out of that. Y'all know how happy I am that they make that gas tank? That we didn't have to try to build something or make something work? That would have been a pain in the butt. We could probably fit a red five gallon gas tank up in there. But have this thing rigged up like the old Yeehaw. Yeehaw! Come on, what's the worst that could happen, huh? Got our ground hooked up, got this dangling where I want it, and our fuel cinder wire, she's hooked up. Now this little panel's pretty damn cool in my opinion. Oopsie, knocked off about 12 pounds of undercoating. Smooth as could be. I got the correct toes, but they sent me a thing for a 3 sixteenths, and I need a damn quarter inch. So one little tube nut is going to keep us from getting that done. Looby dooby ball joints. Uh, I ain't got no grease. I used the grease gun. It was a two pump chump. Squirt, squirt, and it was empty. Tighten brake line. Done did it. I just wrote that to remind me to tighten that. 
pan hard bar got all this stuff here so that leaves us one thing pan hard bar and rear brake hose <laughs> one thing <laughs> i'm a goofball i just walked by here and noticed something i fished these through here i'm pretty sure those are supposed to go in here <laughs> just put her back on the list we'll go ahead and throw pull head out of ass on there too one two three four one thing here's the easiest way to make your factory pan hard bar adjustable you hop online you google one of these uh you buy it for like 50 or 60 bucks and it ain't even worth messing with your factory one guys i ran this out to see how many threads came on here of course you want more than a couple threads holding on there so i always just like to check to see what i'm working with for now i'm gonna adjust this to match the length of this and then when we get everything together we can do a little fine tuning this one's left hand threads that one's right hand thread so that's good oh yeah slide that right on works every time i did hop up here and rearrange our brake cables i don't know what the hell i was thinking i mean that's usually why they kind of flatten that and put a hole there you know but uh yeah that's a little better pan hard bar parking brake cables pull head out of, we better leave that one unfortunately i think that's all we're gonna have time for uh, i did jot down a few things we are really close to getting the set on uh our next big thing is gonna be sitting our drivetrain in and our motor should bolt in but we're gonna have to probably fabricate or really modify that trans cross member there for the 700 r4 and after that we're gonna be we're, we're perked near there i thought we were gonna have it there this week uh, but kind of spur of the moment last night we decided we're gonna take the girls down to texas tomorrow this is possibly our last spring break together as a family because Haley graduates this year uh, so depending on what she's got going on next year, you know. So, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, she is planning on going to school local next year. But you never know. You know, she may be working also and not be able to get away or something. So we're going to go take a day. So that's a day that takes away from this. And if I had one more day on this, I guarantee you that motor and transmission would be sitting in there. We'd get our one nut for our brake line. And possibly this week tomorrow possibly tomorrow our tie rod sleeves would have came in so we could have buttoned up all that up there we're gonna go spend some good time together and this will be here waiting on us and next time we hop on this thing that stuff's getting sat in and this should be ready to go back on but i got done last week and this week i thought i could have got done in one week so i feel like i'm going slow but we got so much going on that i'm doing the best i can i hope y'all still enjoy watching Thank y'all for keep coming back. If you ain't checked out the second channel, I put out a weekly video there too, guys. This last week, I kind of showed y'all some of the behind the scenes. Man, old Slick Fitty went up to the city and got some uh, metal. Yeah, I didn't even show y'all. We're restocked up here, baby. We got all the sizes. But that's it. Uh, be looking forward to seeing these two go together because I know I am. Uh, Puddinsfabshop.com gets you some good quality merchandise. We're kind of running low on merchandise, so expect a restock on some things coming soon. April 15th, we got the car show in Norman, Oklahoma. We'll be there selling merchandise as well in person. And I'm on Patreon and Instagrammer. That's all I can think of. Girls just pulled up. That means it's supper time. And that's good because I'm starving and I'm half freezing. It got cold. I will see you guys next time. But do not forget, sitting on your ass, won't finish your project.